uh, in a nutshell, these are the uh, components of, of the MRCM. You have primary, intermediate, and OSCE. These three actually make up the core uh, MRCM topics. Once you finish that, you have two more exams, that is FRCM SBA and FRCM OSCE. So the naming wise, it's MRCM, that is membership of the Royal College of Emergency Medicine, whether uh, the FRCM is fellowship of the Royal College of Emergency Medicine. So today we will be discussing only about the first part, that is the MRCM. So about primary, intermediate and OSCE. So coming to primary, let's look at the eligibility. So to be able to apply, you need to have a degree that is registrable by the GMC, that is General Medicine, Medical Council, UK. So to find what kind of overseas qualifications are eligible, you can actually visit the G GMC website, that is gmcuk.org and search for acceptable medical qualifications. So candidates registered with Irish Medical Council or International Medical Council are required to upload their copy of current medical registration. So your registration should be current. So if that's uh, expired, they don't accept. So you will have to first get it re renewed, then only you can apply for it. And you should have finished at least the foundation year one. So as per the UK, uh, there are two foundation years, foundation year one and two. So one in India, we call it as house urgency. So you should be done with your house urgency. Then only you will be able to apply. Next, there is another route into the UK that is called DREEM. That is direct uh, defined route of entry into emergency medicine. So once you are done with MRCS or MRCSI after Jan, 2012, you are exempt from taking the MRCM primary. You did not uh, take primary, you can directly go for intermediate. So as such, they don't expect you to have an, an experience in the ER, but uh, in your mandatory rotary internship, you would have done one month of internship at least in the ER. So that should be sufficient. Only for intermediate and OSCE, they expect you to have some ER experience. Next is the number of attempts. So once you start attempting the exam, you will have six attempts. So total attempts will be six. So previously this exam was called as FRCM primary. So there have been a couple of name changes. Previously, they used to call it MRCM part one, then they named it as FRCM primary. Now they're back to MRCM primary. So if you have attempted FRCM primary after August 2016, that will be counted. Out of your six attempts, that will be counted. So what if you really want to pursue MRCM, but you have already exhausted your six chances? Even then, they can take a decision to allow you another attempt if you can convince them. So that depends on the discretion of the dean. So to whom you have to apply. So during 2020 and 2021, they have introduced the online examination. Previously it was paper-based and now it's completely online. So people were having difficulties with connections and uh, they were not used to these exam patterns. So considering that the RCM has said that if you have taken your first attempt at the new online format between July 20. 20 and 31st August 2021, that first attempt will not be counted. So effectively, you can have another attempt extra. So for such people, seven attempts can be given. So as we have seen, the RCM has changed the naming from one to others, and they have already changed the pattern also. Previously, we had a true or false pattern. Now they are into SBA. So in case they want to change the pattern again, you will have, what if the exam patterns are previous past status? So you will be given 24 months of validity for the current past status. So as you have already cleared the exam, you will be given another 24 months to finish your rest of the exams. So that validity will be still there. 
So that doesn't mean in the next two years you have to finish these exams, but th these next two years, this, this past status will be still carried on. So coming to the pattern, you have about 180 minutes in the exam duration. During that period, you need to answer 180 single best answers. So the difference between MCQ, that is multiple choice questions and single best answer is, in multiple choice questions, you will have only one right answer, but in single best answer questions, there could be two or three options that could be right. So in that case, you will have to choose the single best answer. So if sometimes even four or five could be right, but in them, you have to choose only one thing that is the best. So this is about the pattern and coming to the division of marks. So the gross scoring goes into anatomy and physiology. So those are the two topics in which you will have to be thorough. So try these are the most scoring ones. So anatomy and physiology, even during my revision classes, I mainly concentrate on these three. So anatomy, physiology, and pharmacology. They make up almost 144 marks out of 180. So the pass mark will be most of the times close to 110. So if you concentrate and master these three subjects, you should be able to clear the exam. So coming to scoring. So what's included in each subject? So in anatomy, you have about uh, upper limb, lower limb, thorax, abdomen, head and neck, CNS, cranial nerve lesions. These are the things that get tested and you will have 60 marks for the anatomy. And coming to physiology, here also you have about six topics. That is basic cellular physiology, respiratory, cardiovascular, gastrointestinal, renal, and endocrine. Pharmacology, they will test you on majority of the systems, then anesthesia topics and vaccines also. Microbiology, you will have the principles of microbiology and pathogen groups and evidence-based me medicine. So previously there were only six to seven uh, uh, marks for this. Now they have increased it to 10 marks. So statistics, study methodology, principles of critical appraisal. So most of the residents are not so good with evidence-based medicine. So if you are still finding it difficult, just look at the previous questions, what they've asked, and just concentrate on those questions. So coming to the pathology, you have about 10 marks for pathology, uh, sorry, nine marks. So inflammatory responses, immune responses, infection, wound healing, hematology. So most of the times for these low scoring topics, it's better to look at only the previously asked questions and uh, concentrate on the high scoring topics. Your pass mark and results. So the standard is generally set by the ang of method, meaning some uh, experts will be called in to attempt the exam. So they will attempt the exam based on how they score, they will grade each question. So whether it's easy, that should be answered by everyone, or it, is it too difficult, that need not be answered. Based on that, they will give a rating to that question. And it, the final score will depend on that rating. So sometimes they might even delete the questions also. So if the question seems very inappropriate or the answers are confusing, in that case, they might delete it. So results will be, if the, even those dates where the, the results will be published, that will be actually published on the RCM website. Sometimes they keep postponing, even then that will be updated on the website. So passing score doesn't change based on the student's performance. So just because all of them have scored 150, that doesn't mean they're going to change the pass mark to 150. So it all depends on how the experts, so-called experts have answered and residents answers and the candidate answers are not going to influence the score. So results will be available on the dashboard, candidate dashboard only. Previously, they used to release a PDF in which everyone's uh, result was there, but now they're not releasing. So it will be 
confined to the student's dashboard. So these are the previous pass marks. And most of the times it used to be below 100, but recently it has gone up. So almost 110 is the highest till now. So in August, the exam was on two consecutive days. So for one exam, it was 100. For the other, it was 98. So most of the times it is, you can imagine that it is going to be between 100 to 110. So you have a lot of resources nowadays to help. But the first thing you have to do is whichever textbook you want to read, you need not buy specific textbook for the MRCM primary. So the uh, books that you already hold on to, they should be good enough. So all you have to do is download the curriculum file from RCM website and mark the topics in your regular textbooks. That should be enough. And there are revision classes that are provided by so many MRCM qualified doctors uh, to help you expedite with your preparation. So you can check their reputation based on the previous attendees, ask them who is uh, actually helpful to clear your exams. Based on that, you can join. Or if you don't have any friends that took any such classes, you can simply ask for a review class, like preview class. So ask them to allow you for one, ex uh, one class and see how it is and then join that class. Online question banks are available, but these should be done in the last two or three months, you should be doing a lot of questions. So just reading is not enough. You have to do those question banks. And uh, there are a lot of resources available which actually share that uh, MCQs that are downloaded from the website. Uh, you think that you can do offline and all, but it is not going to give you a real feel and it won't give you a feedback. So always go for a subscription. If you can't afford for a long time, at least take the last month subscription. So recalls help, but learn the concept first. So just depending on the previous exam question papers and all, if you think you can clear, it, sometimes those questions can also trick you in the exam. They'll simply change one uh, word in the exam that is going to change the answer. So don't depend blindly on the answers that are given by others on online forums. So first, if you have the concepts right, you'll be able to answer perfectly. Next is the examination fee. So as of today, it is still 330 pounds. So that comes to around 33,000 Indian rupees and AED 1463 and Oman 153. Like that, you will have to convert that currency into your local currency. And there are two ways to take this exam. One is online proctoring at home. So on your uh, local computer itself, you can take it. Otherwise, there is Pearson View Test Center that is available. So this is the most preferable choice. Sometimes your home internet connection could be unstable or your system could have a problem. In that case, if they get disconnected from you, they will simply postpone your exam to the next diet. So there is a, always a risk of losing that diet. So instead of wasting that six months, I would really advise you to take the exam in a test center. So if you have don't have a test center near you, you will have to travel somewhere and do it there instead of just putting a bet on your six months. So it's ideal to actually travel and give exam at a center that is available. So previously, uh, there have been so many instances where the students have prepared very much for the exam, but uh, in the last minute, they could not get the software installed properly or the software installation failed and the ID card verification was not successful. All these things led to postponement of their exam. So their preparation went down the drain. So they'll have to prepare again and give the exam. So to prevent that, always give from a test center. In the event you are somehow unable to give in the test center, and if you want to go to a 
uh, give the exam via online proctoring at home. So Pearson View is the website. They have some guidelines. Uh, let me show you. So this is the Pearson View uh, exam site that is going to tell you the requirements. So which are the technical requirements that are required? So operating system, you will have to choose either Windows 11 or 10 or Mac OS 10.15 and above. If you have a Mac OS that's starting with Mojave, then you will have to give permission to the Unview. And firewall, especially note the Windows 7 is not going to work. So you will have to upgrade your operating system or find an laptop or desktop with Windows 10 or 11. And if you plan to give the exam from your hospital Wi-Fi or workplace Wi-Fi, sometimes they will have restrictions in place. So please don't do that. Give it from a home. Again, test center is good, but if you choose to give from home, do not use corporate Wi-Fi network. Minimum RAM should be 4 GB. Resolution, don't worry about it. This is the minimum any laptop will have. So recommended resolution is full HD. So if you are using multiple monitors, say as of now I'm using three monitors, but if you happen to use more monitors, then you will have to close the other monitors and use only one monitor. Because people sometimes can mirror the display into some other room where someone can be answering from there. So to prevent that, they don't encourage multiple displays. So you have to have an updated browser and internet connection should be stable. And your webcam should be good enough and mobile phones are not allowed during that exam. And microphone should also be of good quality. So these are some of the, so check-in process can be done with the mobiles also. So once the checking process is done, then you can you start using the so to start your test, so you'll have to go to the PSM view. So then click on the take a test. So in that we'll have to, so once we click the take a test, you will be taken to the window uh, to ask you where you're going to take it. So you'll have to type in the RCM. So once you type in RCM, you will get Royal College of Emergency Medicine. So once you get this, so for the upcoming primary exam, you can read this notice. You can start scheduling your appointment for the 17th May exam starting today, that is 17th March. So officially they have opened uh, the slots. You can start booking your exam now. So in this page itself, there is an option to actually testing with OnView. If you're taking at home examination, you will have to go to OnView page. Once you click this, they will take you to the OnView page. So this OnView is the remote testing platform from the Pearson View. So before your actual exam day, please run this system test. So arrange your space, get your proper ID, so this test should be done multiple times to make sure your laptop or desktop is compatible with the software. Sometimes there were occasions where the uh, run, uh, test system was running fine, but on the exam day, it failed somehow. So it's always risky. So that's about the on view. So you, for most of the information you can visit, the RCM page. So on, on RCM page, go to exams. And in that, you have exam FAQs. And this is the application link. Your calendar and fees will be visible there. So when is the next exam scheduled? That you can see on this RCM page. So this is the 2023 calendar. So as you can see, MRCM primary, the first one, 
is here 17th may 2023 so the application window has already closed so the next upcoming is 22nd november for anyone that is thinking about the mrcm primary so you will have to keep looking at this page but sometimes they will keep changing the dates and always look at the updated dates on rcm website and you will have some guidance that is available so mrcm exams if you click the mrcm exams you will be taken to a page so on this page again you will have primary so it has again who can sit the exam what when when does the exam take place how can i book so you have a lot of information here and even so there are some blogs that are available so if you go to a blog on frcm prep website here you have a lot of information that is pertaining to MRCM primary, intermediate, and OSCE. So primary, this is the MRCM primary information blog post. So in this, you have all the information that I've told you till now. So in this, you can download the curriculum file. So once you click this, you'll be downloading the curriculum file. This is actually provided by RCM themselves. So this was actually formulated in June 2010, but it is still applicable. There have been no changes. So once you scroll down, this is the list of topics that are supposed to be known to you. So once you click a topic, again, it will take you to the relevant topic. So in upper limb, they expect you to know all these things. Coming to muzzles, you will need surface markings means on the surface how does that muzzle go from one place to the other so you need to know the origin insertion its actions and now supply so they are mostly interested in knowing the clinical effects of an injury so if say for example there has been a brachial plexus injury how is it going to clinically manifest that what they are interested in not just the answer that you provide so coming to the next one so this is about the primary and now let's discuss about the intermediate exam an intermediate again come uh, eligibility once you have finished your primary that means uh, you are already having the gmc compatible registration now you'll be needing another year that is foundation year two so you should have finished foundation year one that is your house citizenship in india and another year of training post so working in any er is not sufficient that should be a training post that means there should be someone to actually teach you something so that is called as a training post Next, you should have passed the FRCM primary or MRCM part A after August 2012 or MRCM primary 2021. Or if you're chosen to take a DREM uh, route, in that case, you should have been given exemption anyway. That is MRCM part A or MRCM primary as a result of obtaining MRCS or MRCSI after Jan 2012. So this is all the eligibility criteria for MRCM intermediate. Again, coming to the number of attempts. So again, you have six attempts to take. But if you have attempted FRCM intermediate SAQ, previously it was SAQ in the sense, short answer questions. So if you have taken the SAQ after 2016, that will be counted. So out of six attempts, that attempt will be taken. Again, if you have uh, exhausted your six attempts, you can request them for another attempt and uh, there is a chance they might or might not agree to that. So first attempt at a new online format, just like the primary. Again, if you have taken the first online exam, um, that means online exam for the first time, you can be given exemption in that attempt. So what if the exam pattern again changes? 
So your past status again will be valid for next 24 months. Next, the pattern. In pattern, you will have about 180 single best answers. So, but these 180 will be divided into two exams of 90 and 90. So first 90 paper, uh, marks will be, 90 questions will have two hours. Then the second 90 will again have two hours. So between these two hour sessions, you will have one hour break. So in a single day, you will be spending about five hours for this testing. So two hours plus one hour of rest and another two hours for the paper two. So it will be divided into two papers. Coming to marks division, you have something called a specialty learning outcomes. So they have been divided into specialty learning outside outcomes. If you take a look, SLO one has about 55 marks, three has 40, four has 30, five has 25, six has 20. So out of these, the SLO one has a lot of content. So instead of concentrating on this, I would suggest you to concentrate on rest of the topics. So just these three or four topics are going to fetch good amount of marks and they have less topics to concentrate. So instead of wasting a lot of time on SLO one, you should be obviously thorough with SLO one, but for the exam purpose, you should always concentrate on these three first. Sorry, these five first. Now coming to the scoring, <clears throat> as I told you, SLO one has a lot of content. So all these topics are there and under each topic, there are a lot of topics. And in SLO three, as you can see, there are less number of topics. So resuscitation, palliative and end of life care. So resuscitation, obviously you will have to master it. So not just for the exam, your practice also needs this. So concentrating on this is going to give you about close to 40 marks. And next is SLO4. Every year physician should be good with the trauma. So major trauma and pain and sedation. So these are your skills anyway. So you have to master the theory part also. And SLO5, this is mostly concerned with the pediatric age group. So pediatric and neonatal. So safeguarding in children, psychosocial emergencies in children. SLO6, again, it's mostly about the procedures. So the content is very much limited, but you get 20 marks out of this. So airway management, chest strain, pacing, fracture dislocation manipulations, lumbar puncture, pain and sedation, focus, vascular access and EM, or IOR, femoral vein access, wound management. These are required out of SLO 6. So coming to SLO 7, you will go through the legislation and legal framework, organ or tissue donation, information governance, safeguarding, and evidence and guidelines. So these are all core UK topics. That means if you are not working in UK, it's very difficult for anyone that is attempting from outside. So you'll have to take help from those working in UK to get answers right. So go through the previous questions that are asked from these topics and try to get answers from consultant level people that are working in the UK. You do have some guidance, but again, you need to know where to look for it. So UK has websites for most of the relevant uh, specialties. Always get latest information from those websites. The RCM has actually given some sample questions. So sample questions are available. So you can just download from the internet. So let me just show you some sample questions. So these are the sample questions. So this file can be downloaded from RCM. So a 17 year old man attended the ED with rash. He had cold sore the previous week and has developed multiple lesions on his hands and torso. 
he systemically well which of the following is the most likely diagnosis as you can see it's a classic target lesion so it's erythema multiforme like that there are about eight questions in the sample question paper that they have given so again this is available on the rcm website So next, let's look at the uh, curriculum. So curriculum is given on RCM website. That is again RCM curriculum. So let me just show you that website. So it includes most of the content that is, let me just give me some time. So this is the website for RCM curriculum. So you have SLOs that are given here, that is specialty learning outcomes. So under each, what is expected from you is written. So for example, if we take SLO4 on RCM curriculum website, so the website address is rcmcurriculum.co.uk. So once you go there, So it's still loading. So you have the specifications and relevant GPC domain. So you have domains. That means domain one is about professional values and behavior. Domain two deals with professional skills. So these are the particular domains in each SLO you need to be aware of and your key capabilities will be listed for each SLO. So as an intermediate trainee, what you're supposed to know, and as a higher training fellow, what are you supposed to know? So till intermediate, you're supposed to learn. Higher specialty is during your FRCM training, you can go for that. So coming to the syllabus part, even syllabus part is actually depicted on the website. Once you click that, you will get a list of all the topics. So even on this blog website, uh, MRCM Intermediate. So resources have been given. So which are the topics that are expected from you? This is actually taken from the same website that RCM operates. So under allergy, so allergy is under SLO1. So under allergy, what are the presentations that you should be aware of and what are the conditions that you should be aware of? So for each topic, there are a lot of presentations and issues. So just in SLO1, you have all these topics, allergy, cardiology, and dermatology, ENT, like that a lot of content is available. So you need to mark these topics on whichever resource you're studying and go through that. So this is about the SLO1. So coming to SLO3, as I told you, it has a lot of scoring. So only recess and palliative care. So in recess, obviously, you will be good with all these things. So your airway obstruction, anaphylaxis, cardiorespiratory arrest, major trauma, respiratory failure, sepsis, shock, unconsciousness. These presentations you are going to see in day-to-day -day practice. So it is not difficult to score on research. Also in palliative end-of-life care, this requires some UK knowledge. So you'll have to read some websites that are available in UK. SLO1 is about trauma and again, Content is limited, you just have to master it. SLO5, again, only neonatal, a little bit of uh, knowledge from neonatal, just five or six topics. <clears throat> and then safeguarding. Again, safeguarding is not an easy topic, so you'll have to go through some resources. 
procedure skills again limited set you will have to know all about that under resources rcm has actually given a lot of resources which you can use and slo6 other topics which are all the procedures that you are need you need to be aware even that list is given focus related even that pdf has been given so these three pdfs are given by the rcm itself so slo7 again it's a tricky topic again these links have been provided where you can see each of the topics so some pdfs again have been given so rcm clinical guidelines and external guidelines so make use of the material that's been given by the rcm now let's look at the pass mark So coming to the pass mark, again, the standard is set using the same ang of method, wherein experts will answer the paper first. They will decide how much should be a decent score to pass. So again, some questions may be deleted. Results will be published on the set day. And passing score, again, doesn't change based on student performance. Why I'm reiterating this fact is sometimes people don't share valuable resources with their friends, thinking that he might score more than me. Always discussions are going to help you a lot to remember. So prepare in groups, find an online partner if you don't have a colleague that is preparing for the exam. And that way you both can clear. So don't worry about your friend scoring more than you. All you have to do is score more than the pass mark. That's it. So it doesn't really matter whether you have just scored the pass mark or 10 to 15 marks more than the pass mark. Clearing the exam is more important. So discuss, join courses together and follow along. So results will be again sent on dashboard. So previous pass mark. So since they have changed the exam pattern, so only those scores I'm depicting here. So it was 109, then 106, wherein they have actually removed 17 questions from scoring. And in September 2020, that is the last exam, it was 112. So again, your passing mark is going to be around 110. So maybe five to 10 marks here and there, but close to that. So fee, it is approximately same as MRCM primary. So it was uh, 330 for primary, 335 for intermediate. Both are computer-based tests, so there's no change in fee. Again, when you can be chosen at test center or online proctoring at, proctoring at home. So always choose a test center, I'm telling you again. Next, let's look at the final exam, that is MRCM OSCE. OSCE full form is Objective Structured Clinical Examination. So it is kind of USMLE step two CS. Now USMLE has scrapped this uh, examination, but if you have ever prepared for USMLE, you will feel familiar with that exam. So again, number of attempts you will have, sorry, uh, let's look at the eligibility. You should have cleared the intermediate. Previously, even after giving MRCM primary, you were allowed to give MRCM OSCE. So there were a lot of people that have uh, cleared MRCM primary and OSCE, but intermediate, that is part two was left over. But now it's not the case because you cannot give the OSCE unless you have cleared the intermediate. So intermediate should have passed uh, the FRCM intermediate, SAQ or MRCM part B after August 2012 or MRC intermediate after the name change that is from 2021. Experience. You should have 24 months of experience post FI1. So FI1 was foundation year one, that is house surgeonship in India. And after that, you should have another 24 months of experience. So out of this 24 months, only six months of emergency experience is asked for. So not more than that. Because after clearing MRCM, 
you are expected to work under a consultant there as a registrar. So they won't expect you to be too much thorough in what you do. So you will always be under supervision. So that's the reason they expect you to have only six months of emergency medicine. But your overall experience, be it in medicine or ICU, so overall experience should be 24 months after your house surgeonship. But if you have joined a residency program, so some residency programs don't allow you to write the exam after you have finished, unless you have finished three years of residency. That is to make sure you actually master your skills and exam. Because not everyone leaves the country for UK. Some of you will be practicing somewhere. So without that three, three years of residency, without thorough preparation, just having the degree is not enough. That's the reason those program directors will not allow you to write your exams just after two years. They will ask you to wait three years. So coming to number of attempts. Again, six attempts. So any attempts that are attempted before August 2021 20, are counted towards the number of available attempts. So attempts at MRCM Part C before August 2016 will not count towards the number of attempts. So this is about the number of attempts that you can take for MRCM OSCE. So coming to stations, you will have 16 stations that need to be answered. And before you enter a station, you will have one minute of preparation. So one minute, you get to read the question and frame your mind before you enter the station. The actual station will run for eight minutes. At the end of eight minutes, you will have another station again with one minute to read the scenario and eight minutes to perform. Like this, you will go through 18 stations, wherein two stations will be for rest. So after that rest station need not come exactly after seven or eight stations. Some of you can actually start with the rest station and some of you may get after performing eight stations. So if you get it after getting uh, doing for four or five stations, you are lucky because you get you will get those rest stations between your performance. If you get it at the ninth one or 18th one, the 18th one will be waste anyway. But you cannot choose when you want a rest station. So in the image, you might see that he's sleeping, but trust me, you won't be able to sleep in those eight minutes and you will have. So the key here is not to worry about your previous station. So once you get out of the station, forget about it. You cannot undo anything that you have done there, any stupid mistakes. Just forget it and start fresh. I know it's not easy, but un with proper preparation, you'll be able to do that. And that comes with only practice. So ASCII is all about practice. What you do with your patients, you have to follow the same ASCII format whenever you receive a patient, introducing or talking to the patient taking history, all those things should be in line with your OSCE preparation. So that will make your final OSCE very easy. So now in each station, they can test any of the domains. So there are about seven domains that get tested. How is your clinical reasoning or decision making? How are your communication skills? How are you talking to the patient, including conflict with a colleague or if some referral related issue how you are able to convince history taking, information gathering from the patient or attendant, your examination skills, practical skills, your teaching skills, because two stations will be teaching skills. Teaching stations in them, your teaching skills should will be tested. Your organization and prioritization, what are you doing first? So you have to go in a proper order. So doing everything that's on the checklist is not enough you have to go in the proper order. So coming to the stations, out of 18 stations, two will be rest stations. These are the 16 stations. So about three stations will be based on SLO1, that is complex stable patient. Two will be 
answering questions two will be research stations two will be injured patient and one will be pediatric emergency medicine related two will be procedural skills two will be complex challenging station situations where they will ask you to convince uh, your uh, consultant to come and see the patient or another department consultant to come and see or contradict one of the other specialty consultant when he is doing something wrong and the other two are supervise and teach so they will give you a scenario wherein your president wants to learn something go and teach something so though those domains are individually listed some of the domains can be tested together so in each sessions not just one almost four domains can be tested so in each domain they will grade you on four things so your competence your skill level are you making any errors how are you completing your task is it fully completed or not completed so based on that they will give you scoring if your competence is below minimum competence very uh, that is well below minimum they will score you zero if it's well above it's scored four similarly your knowledge and skills very poor level uh, that is zero that is well above the minimum level of knowledge that is four frequent minor errors zero no errors four task not completed is scored zero task completed to high standard is going to be given four marks so based on the judgment of your examiner you will be getting a score so the examiners will be using ipads to enter your scores into the database so you will have cumulatively you will have 10 marks per station so based on how the uh, judgment uh, how your examiner is judging you you will get some marks out of the 10 per station so you will be tested on 16 stations so in that total score will be 160 so timer so just because uh, it's in 8 minutes you have to finish all those things they are not going to remind you of the time so you have last one minute last two minutes these reminders will not be given so you have to manage your time on your own some stations might have an analog clock means a clock like this not a digital clock and some might be kind enough to provide digital clocks but as per rcm rules they need not provide a digital clock and sometimes even if you wear a watch most of the times you won't have time to look at it and in that stress you will keep on performing so only with practice you will be able to finish those stations under 8 minutes so the key to succeed in mrcm ascii is to actually practice so you have two research stations as per the table previous table you have two research stations among the two research stations you must clear at least one station so unless you clear at least one station you will not have a pass status in the mrcm ascii so concentrate on research you must clear one fee it is going to vary with the location so in the uk it's cheaper for 50 pounds in india it's 650 pounds in malaysia it's 750 pounds previously rcm used to collect some money and the local test centers used to take some money apart from the examination fee now that local fee is included in this so apart from this you will not be asked for it but you have to find a test center uh that and a stay needs to be booked by yourself so coming to venues as of now as per the current calendar year these are the venues that are available in uk it's london in india chennai hyderabad kochi have been allocated test centers malaysia they have done one in kuala lumpur oman is being considered but not yet finalized so under the faqs they have mentioned that for the uh, uae region oman is being planned 
So coming to your appearance, they expect you to wear professional clothing. If you can wear something formal, that's well and good. If you don't want to wear that, you can wear your scrub suits. But on scrub suits, you are not supposed to have your hospital logos and your names. So you have to put some tape to mask that. And if you are wearing some wheel kind of thing, so for that, if it covers your head, that's allowed. If it covers your face, that is not accepted. So you will have to remove anything that covers your face. Coming to pass marks, the examiner judge mark judgment is going to decide whether you are you will clear or not. Again, it will be published on the previously announced day, and it will be available on dashboard on the ASIM website. So, if you have cleared all those exams, you will receive an MRCM degree, and some yearly they will conduct graduation ceremony. That is convocation ceremony you will be sent an invitation and if you want to go you can go and if you plan on working at uk you need to have gmc registration so the references for this presentation rcm official website rcm curriculum website that is frcm prep uh, blogs psn view that is the examination website And if you still have any questions, you can reach me on Telegram or on social media handles, Facebook or Twitter. That is Nimala is the handle. If you want to reach me on Telegram, that's you can search for NIMMS NIMS. And every Friday, we conduct such webinars that are relevant to emergency medicine. You can actually join our Telegram group. So that is telegram.me slash medmeet, med underscore meet. There you can actually find uh, the links for such webinars. So if you have any questions, you can post in the QA. QA section is open. Or if you want, you can uh, contact me later on the social media handles also. So looks like there are no questions. So we will be ending the session. So this recording can be again watched on Facebook. We will share some. So someone says, I have done MEM four years back. Is there any offline training center available for MRCM? So offline training center, again, it depends on place to place. So. It, there are some uh, locations available in Hyderabad. Again, it depends. But for MRCM, you don't need an offline training center. Even online is available. Even I conduct some classes. You can contact me. So pass mark for OSCE. They don't actually give you marks, but uh, it all depends on the stations that you have cleared and uh, recent scoring they have changed in the last exam itself based on the ipad uh, scoring and all 